Guillain-Barre syndrome is the um, topic for this video and uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome involves um, um, essentially a um, demyelination of the uh, nerves the nerves in our in our body have a, have a coating insulating coating and that coating is called myelin and that myelin is uh, responsible or helps uh, impulses go along these nerves uh, more rapidly in diseases that cause demyelination or effectively uh, where the uh, myelin is being lost that can make the nerve uh, lose their function um, and that can result in a lot of problems and we'll talk a little bit about that so what is Guillain-Barre syndrome what's happening here well here's a typical scenario a person is infected there's an infection the most common one is uh, Campylobacter Jigeny uh, but there's other ones like cytomegalovirus or Epstein-Barr virus and then after this infection about maybe five days later five days to maybe three weeks later the person starts to develop something called an ascending paralysis and what that just means is that from bottom to top so from their legs going on upward they start to get this paralysis so they're infected and then some days or weeks later they start to get this ascending paralysis so initially they have weakness uh, in their legs and then eventually it progresses up to their arms and this is what they mean by ascending paralysis so why is this weakness and paralysis happening well it goes back to what we talked about a little earlier on is that it's a demyelinating disorder and um, when this uh, happens, um, the other way of thinking about this is an inflammatory neuropathy. What this causes is essentially it affects the neurons are demyelinated. So that myelin coating that uh, insulates and covers the nerves slowly begins to uh, dissipate and wither away and that can cause this weakness there's uh, several other symptoms that can uh, occur in uh, Guillain-Barre GBS Guillain-Barre syndrome and of course uh, weakness of extremities is one of them uh, legs and arms but you can also uh, get uh, respiratory paralysis also which uh, is a very serious complication because the person will have to eventually be intubated you can also lose your deep tendon reflexes and um, you can also develop uh, um, paresthesias uh, meaning um, loss of sensation in the extremities as well so how do you diagnose this well the clinical history is usually very important a person comes in and you ask them questions as to how, you know what happened uh, in the past few weeks is there any uh, thing that you did that could have resulted in you becoming infected with one of the pathogens that uh, can cause this but then of course the symptomatology also part plays a big role but there are there is a couple tests that are done first is an, an analyzing the CSF the cerebrospinal fluid and the other one is uh, doing the uh, nerve conduction studies the uh, CSF has a classic uh, um, a result diagnostic result and that is that the protein will be increased in the cerebrospinal fluid but the WBC count will be normal so remember that and the nerve conduction studies will basically show that the nerve conduction velocities are slower and that makes perfect sense because remember 
that myelin sheath, its primary function is to help impulses go along faster from the brain to some part of the body. When the myelin is degraded or demyelination occurs, those kind of impulses travel slower because the myelin is not there to make them go faster. So what you see on these nerve conduction studies is slow nerve conduction speeds, which is exactly what you would expect in demyelination. Okay, so how do we treat this? Well, there's three things that you need to remember for the treatment of GBS. The first one is because it's so severe, uh, this really is a intensive care uh, unit uh, management. Um, that's the first thing. It's uh, it involves intubation and and a lot of the um, um, very complex uh, management that can only occur in an ICU. It's a medical emergency. The second part of the treatment is IV immunoglobin. That is what you do first. That's the treatment of choice for GBS. So remember that. And if that doesn't work, if not successful, then you do the last part, uh, the last uh, resort, which is plasma exchange, where you literally uh, uh, draw the blood and replace it with fresh blood. And now I have a couple vignettes for you. And here we go. After an upper respiratory infection, 35-year-old man develops severe lower back pain. On the next several days, severe generalized muscle weakness occurs, accompanied by distal paresthesia. On physical exam, weakness is evident, but there is no appreciable sensory loss. Nerve conduction studies show evidence of demyelination. Over the next two months, the patient recovers with minimal residual sequelae. This patient most likely has which of the following diseases? Well, it's a perfect uh, scenario. A person uh, develops an infection. They don't say which one, but it could be Campylobacter. It could be other ones. And then develops this uh, generalized weakness. They don't really describe it as an ascending paralysis, meaning it started in the feet or legs and then moved up to the arms, but that's okay. But it, they do mention that there's some sensory loss. And then they show this nerve conduction study showing that there's demyelination. They could have also said that uh, the nerve conduction study showed that the conduction is uh, slow, slow nerve conduction velocities. That would be another way of wording it because that's what demyelination does. They just give you the word right up front. Well, it's pretty straightforward. The answer choices are just essentially giving you the disease, so it's pretty straightforward. And then the final one, a 20-year-old male comes to the university clinic supported by his roommates because he cannot walk. He describes a rapidly evolving weakness affecting his legs and feet starting two days ago. Physical exam, he cannot move his feet or ankles, and he can barely rise, raise his thighs off the bed. He has symmetrical hyporeflexia of the legs, but his sensorium is completely intact. Scanning his chart, the physician notes that he was treated 10 days previously for an upper respiratory tract infection. The immunological response producing the patient's symptoms is most intense at which of the following locations. All right, well, this is again a classic presentation. Uh, unlike this question, which, well, actually this one said upper respiratory infection also. Um, if it's upper respiratory infection, it makes me think of some other uh, types of pathogens rather than Campylobacter jejuni because this one is, is more of a bowel uh, related um, uh, pathogen. If it's upper respiratory tract it's probably some other um, uh, virus uh, rather a mycoplasma or, or, or some other virus but whatever uh, pathogen it is it sh this vignette shows that that's sort of the trigger. And then they're describing that this patient has weakness and you know, hyperreflexia and all that. Well, what they're saying is well, what's being targeted. Well, we talked how the nerves or the, the neurons uh, in GBS, Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, are affected. So it's really the, 
the nerves that are affected because the myelin sheath uh, uh, is lost. Of all these, the only one that says nerves is choice E. <clears throat>